Hey there, I'm Jesse Hall, and I'm your host for Business Elite Brevard Edition, the podcast that brings you all of the influencers, innovators, and industry leaders from right here on the Space Coast. All right, and again, welcome to another episode of Business Elite Brevard Edition. I am your host, Jesse Hall. Hello, how are you? And uh, and we're going to go a little bit off format for today's episode because... We have a very special guest who is going to help us kind of navigate some of what's going on. Uh, again, uh, welcome. Please share this message for any uh, business owner you may know of who may be kind of stuck in this weird thing we're going through with this crisis, with the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic. crisis. It's crazy. It's crazy. But anyway, uh, I have a very special guest and we're going to get into to her introduce her in just a little bit but again share this far and wide and of course if you have any questions this is a PSA this is going to be a highly interactive episode we are going to address all your questions and comments so again make sure that if there is something that you need to know from us we have the live stream here on Facebook and we are looking at those comments so please use those again pass this stream on to someone that you care about who has a a business, whether they're a small business owner or even a big business owner, whether it's private or public or whatever it may have you. I think we're going to address need to know items that anybody could find useful. Mm-hmm. Catherine Rudloff joins me in the studio. She is now with uh, WeVenture mm-hmm. and she's going to tell us about her role in her position and, uh, and what, what she's going to do with it. But then we're going to go right into how they can help the community uh, navigate again through some of the offerings from the federal government and also state and local uh, governments as well. So there's all kinds of grants and opportunities out there and they uh, not only are here to coach and help develop a business here on the Space Coast normally as a primary function, but now through all of this, they are actually adopting a whole new function and really just going heavy duty with yeah. Helping Over the assistance. Time. Okay. So, welcome. Thank you. How are you doing with uh, the quarantining and the self-distancing uh, and all that? Oh, I have three children. Oh. Um, so, overnight, I became an elementary school teacher. I'm sure you did. <laughs> which um, is not my greatest skill set. Uh, so, it's been interesting. The kids have been real troopers for it. Both my husband and I are very fortunate that we are still working and um, busy. So, just juggling it all has been a challenge. But we right. just take it one day at a time. One day at a time, as, as most, thing, as most, most things. things. Second, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, unfortunately, this this may not, I mean, it may not have a, it seems like the goalpost is always being push, yeah. pushed further and further. So we don't really know if there's an end date. Uh, we don't know when that timeline is. It's not like a season or a holiday that we know, you know, has an expiration date. Uh, so this could, in fact, impact a lot of businesses. Mm. Um, some may come out of it stronger. Some may be able to pivot from what they were doing into something new. Uh, and then there's going to be some that don't make it, yeah. unfortunately, unfortunately. Is, is, a, is, a, is a reality of this. Um, so let's first talk about you and what you do with WeVenture. And then we're going to talk about the functionality, the primary functionality sure. of WeVenture. So sure. what do you do? So, um, again, I'm the executive director of WeVenture, Mm -hmm. and WeVenture is a women's business center located at Florida Tech University. It was founded in 2007, Mm -hmm. um, uh, and back then it was just known as the Women's Business Center. But the SBA actually offers grants um, to form these business centers around the country. Mm -hmm. And so some are designated as a women's business center, some are just small business development centers. Brevard's uh, very lucky, we have both. So we have a small business development center center Mm -hmm. at Eastern Florida State College and then we are we venture women's business center at Florida Tech Um, and normally in good times we are helping businesses launch and grow so we really were kind of like a local not quite an accelerator but we do offer low or no cost business coaching and Mm -hmm. education and consultation um, so that if you're a small business owner you know certainly you can't afford to go out and hire a consultant from you know New York or San Francisco we can put together a team. Um, we have resident, um, you know, both volunteers and staff mm-hmm. that help walk you through how to launch and grow your business. But in times of crisis like right. this, 
we become the boots on the ground for the Small Business Administration. Mm -hmm. So our local SBDC at Eastern Florida, they are very involved with the state bridge loan application process and then working with the SBA on sorting through all the applicants that are coming through. Mm -hmm. So as a women's business center, our primary function is we're still able to offer that one-on-one coaching and consultation with businesses to help them decide which you know, relief packages they might want to take advantage of to help them assess their business and say, okay, is this really going to benefit you? Is this what you need? Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately, when they start to get, maybe get denied and kicked back from the SBA loan process, they'll be referred to us as women's business centers. We can help them work on their application, correct any mistakes that they had, and then hopefully connect them to even other resources so they can either resubmit their application or find the help they need from a private lender or elsewhere. Yeah, that and, and, and it, it sounds like it's a it's a full functioning role there. It is. How 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 does we venture and and the uh, Florida Tech kind of work together? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So What's that? so it is actually the SBA funded a grant at Florida Tech. So we're okay. what we would call a sponsored program at okay. the university. Um, and so we have to still raise from the community. We're a nonprofit, and we have a match requirement from the Small Business Administration. So they give us one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. We raise about one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and then that allows us to offer again low or no cost business education and consulting. And being a part of Florida Tech is a huge asset mm-hmm. because we have access to you know their communications and their resources and their HR so as a nonprofit anybody who's worked in the nonprofit sector that's a huge benefit a lot of our overhead and administration we're able to rely on the university to help us with but then being a part of the business school our mentors our teachers and a lot of our programming we work closely with the professors there to help ensure the education we're offering is accurate and timely and what businesses need Wow, great answer. By the way, I, th- I think I think that that satisfies um, uh, most of that curiosity because you're you're offering things to the public, but you're kind of supported okay. by the private, private university. university. Yeah. How, how much of the the student versus the public? Uh, are, are, are you helping or is it just strictly public out service? No, we do absolutely get students because okay. young people are fantastically entrepreneurial. Right. So we um, when we certainly try to encourage interns, you know, in that and um, I'm able to be involved with a lot of the course offerings that the professors might offer mm-hmm. and be a judge when they do their, you know, if they need a pitch panel, you know, to sit in mm-hmm. and judge or, um, you know, review decks and something, you know, they'll send them down students our way just as well. Right. But I would say the majority of the clients that we serve are um, non-Florida Tech students. They come from the community. And our, our service area, according to the SBA, is not just Brevard, but it's all of Indian River and St. Mm-hmm. Lucie County as well. So we try to um, reach female entrepreneurs and all entrepreneurs, you know, in a three-county radius to um, come take advantage of our consulting. Okay, so you, ser- you serve a, a really big Try to. portion of mm-hmm. of, uh, of this central Florida area mm-hmm. when you talk about this relationship with Eastern Florida mm-hmm. the other college here in town yep. What is SBDC? That so acronym? SBDC, that's a small business development center. Mm-hmm. We're a women's business center. So gotcha. the federal government through the SBA realized, I don't even know when those programs began, that it was a worthwhile investment mm-hmm. for them to have boots on the ground right. um, in local communities, helping ensure small businesses had access to um not just the consulting services like what we offer, but making right. sure they understand the the resources and federal lending programs that are out there. So the SBDC, I would say um, we work in partnership with. Mm-hmm. They have their strong suits. We have ours. Again, we can help both um, businesses that are owned by both men and women, but right. we have some programming that's tailored towards, you know, female empowerment and making sure, you know, um, female entrepreneurs um, mm-hmm. overcome any hurdles that they might face in society still unfortunately the sbdc i would say their strength really is in a lot of the financial because the sba funds a lot of um, loan programs Mm -hmm. and has a lot of opportunity so when someone really wants help with that we find that they go to the sbdc Um, we offer a little bit broader spectrum where we're looking at hr we're looking at your business plan we're looking at um, helping you um you know, plan strategically for growth if you're already a founded company and you're looking to, you know, maybe what we call move to phase two. So different businesses get different value out of us, but Mm -hmm. we do partner together. And certainly in this crisis, we're working really closely with them because the SBDC is actually the office that's tasked with um, 
helping monitor the application process and they're helping the businesses that are applying and then doing the kickbacks um, and, and they're on the, the processing side, we can be there to offer that one-on-one -on -one consultation with businesses to decide what should I apply for? Do I have my ducks in a row? Am I ready to apply? Mm -hmm. And then once you're ready to apply, you're going to the SBDC. But they're simply overwhelmed with the amount of response of businesses well, yeah. seeking help that they're not able to offer maybe the one-on-one -on -one time that I have a staff of four and we mm -hmm. would all, we would be happy to help you. Um, and that's kind of what our role and what the SBA has tasked us. And unfortunately, as we start to see individual businesses get declined for loans for various reasons, they're asking the WBCs to step up and help walk through your application because you can apply up to three times over a six month period. So maybe something didn't check the right box. So excuse me, it's okay. um, your first application, we'll try mm -hmm. to help you figure that out or connect you to other local resources that, that maybe can benefit your business. So you, you, you mentioned a lot of this with uh, entrepreneurs starting up. Is it only for the startup? No. As an incubator, you mentioned accelerator. So when, when a business is thinking about, let's say somebody brings to you a concept, and then you would kind of incubate that, you know, figure it out, get, develop a business plan, develop whether they could qualify for funding or not. But in these times, we're, we're mostly going to be focusing on existing businesses. So mm -hmm. what if somebody's never worked with WeVenture? We Who would qualify? Who's your best candidate, do you think? Everybody. So we say that at WeVenture, we're here to help you start, grow, or to launch, grow, and sustain your business. Mm -hmm. And so on um, an annual basis, like last year in 2019, we served 623 unique clients and we helped, I believe it was 29 new businesses oh, wow. launch. Um, but obviously 29 new businesses launching, but we served 623 clients. So right. the majority of people that we help are probably already in business okay. or um, executives within a business. Um, so that gives you a little breakdown you sure. know, in terms of that. But we have programming that's geared towards and is still filling up right now our, our goal-oriented entrepreneurs making strides, we call it GEMS. Mm -hmm. um, that is a 12-week program that you start off with your business idea and we're gonna help you write a business plan and get through your um, financials and by the end you'll have your pitch deck and hopefully have filed your paperwork and launch. That's still taking place this summer and we have people signing up. Cause that, that's what entrepreneurs do. You know, right. They see opportunity where others don't. So we're still focused on launching businesses, mm -hmm. but for sure the majority of our time these last two or three weeks probably going on a month now, mm -hmm. has been working with established businesses, okay. how they'll pivot or how they'll respond to this COVID crisis. Perfect. And that's what we're going to get to today. And so now that we are familiar with uh, WeVenture, mm -hmm. why, you're, why you do what you do, mm -hmm. who is helping you help others here on the community, like you mentioned, you know, boots on the ground with the SBA. So it sounds like you, you, you've already kind of been doing similar things so now that we're in this kind of crisis, it seems like you would be like the go-to authority. We, would, we hope so, yeah. yeah. And really, uh, my goal, and, and I'm so grateful for you having me on today, because sure. a lot of businesses feel very alone and confused right now. Of course. And so um, my goal is just to help them know that there are resources out there for you. And we're working very closely with all of the business service organizations in the community, the mm -hmm. local chambers, the EDC, groups like Melbourne Main Street, Melbourne Main Street and mm -hmm. Groundswell, right. to make sure they have this accurate information and that as many of us as possible are here to help walk businesses through the options that they have. So let me throw a curveball because we, <laughs> as we're already into like the, the first 15 minutes and, and, sure. and I'm really glad that you were able to explain what the role of the WeVenture is because I think it can be confusing. People may mm -hmm. just think it's a resource only for women and yep. so forth. So now that we know that it's there's no discrimination, no discrimination. No, yeah. let's talk about some of the common myths that we're hearing out there and then we're going to take some of the uh, questions, we're already getting some of the uh, some some comments in here on on our live stream. Yeah. So, what are some myths that you're hearing that you could help us squash? Because I know there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of mi misinformation. Um, a couple. So, right. um, you brought up earlier the SBA loan application. So, mm -hmm. when we first announced as part of the the second relief package that Congress passed, that was like the Family Corona virus response <laughs> act cares. Right, give it, no no, no cares, that, cares a, is the third that's the third so okay. the second they they first passed a great big stimulus right um that wasn't necessarily geared towards small businesses right and then the second one that's where we saw the expansion of family medical leave okay, and, yeah. and um yes. some of those policies within that that's when the economic injury disaster loan the eidl loan program went live for the sba and in that first week and a half two weeks 
it was crashing. And oh. they really, because our local SBDCs were told to go remotely as well, there mm -hmm. was no option to fill these out and hand them to someone. Right. You could either mail them in or do them online, but the online format was just crashing and, and it wasn't working. Um, so since then, they have scratched it. They streamlined the application process on SBA. I think it's um, disaster loan, sba.gov slash disaster loans. Right. Um, and they've streamlined the process, and it now, will now be a two-phase application. So you should be able to apply for the SBA EIDL loan in under 20 minutes. Now, that's not the final step. Right. What that does is going to help the SBA determine what you're eligible for, if anything, and put you in the right pipeline. Gotcha. And then there'll be a second follow-up application process where you'll f further through um, towards getting your uh, resources. But Perfect. That, that's a big mythology because people are saying, right. why should I bother? It's crashing. Right. Um, uh, uh, and then I will remind you that the government, I hate to say this, but they do want to help. They want to get the money in the hands of people. That's everything right. that we're hearing from the president on down to the um, local SBA you know, regional staff. Mm. So just pack your patients. You can still mail things in. Um, but now that in just last week it was opened up with the streamlined process, right. we encourage you to apply again if you haven't heard from the SBA. Um, and then a second myth, I will go with a second myth that we've heard is that um, you can just go and get that um, paycheck protection plan um, from any local bank and lender. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the plan that was in the CARES Act that okay. was only signed into law, you know, just over a week ago. Yeah, like 10 days ago. Right? Yeah. Um, I think mm -hmm. April not even April, it was still the end of March, and then it went into effect on April 3rd. Mm -hmm. um, this is happening so quickly. And I think if anybody who's read the newspaper has seen that the, the federal government and the Treasury Department is still negotiating with the banks, and they just re-released some further guidelines for the banks on how these loans should be getting made. Right. And Friday, we heard a lot of frustration from individuals who were finding out that either their bank didn't qualify as an SBA lender, mm -hmm. or that if the bank did qualify, it was requiring them to have an existing line of credit, um, either a credit card or a loan. We are starting to see that as banks are processing through those sets of customers, and if they are focusing on their customers, more will be opening up to, okay, you could be one of our clients but not have a line of credit. And then even today, I'm starting to hear um, Marine Bank and Trust and a few others are starting to open up to non-existing clients. So if you don't have a bank that you have a relationship with that mm. you will start to be able to find lenders to go to. So it's just going to take patience. Again, it just passed 10 days ago, right. and it's trying to come from the federal government to you know, millions of banks around the country. is not an efficient. <laughs> Nothing is efficient. Right. Nothing is efficient. Well, well I want to I want to just bring up the uh, a couple of the concerns here that we're finding sure. on uh, our Facebook live stream here. Mike McCarty, thank you so much for tuning in. Has anyone received the 10K loan? Yes. yes. We, ha we have heard from businesses that have successfully applied for and received the 10K loan already. So it is happening. It is. Now, they were very ready to go. Those mm -hmm. were businesses that had their ducks in order right. and were... Drawn in a spot with yep, it. Yep, yep. Probably because they worked with someone like you. But they were also... <laughs> so I'll put it this way. They right. were businesses that had worked with the SBA before. So maybe they had been familiar. Like maybe when they first started, they had gotten a small right. business um, loan. So they were, you knew what to expect. For or the perhaps they already had a committee set up specifically to deal with those kind of things. I mean, some well, people just designate, you know, an employee like you're, you're, our, you're going to do this. Right. Yeah. And one thing I will say, um, if I may, sure. for, for our PSA, the SBA is very clear that you should not have to pay anyone to help fill out these applications, be not only because they've streamlined it, right. but because in general, this should be information every small business owner has. Your recent taxes, your monthly payroll statements, um, you know, projection of revenue, they're saying go mm. three to four months out or look at your previous, um, either year over year, right. or your previous couple months. Um, and they actually ask on the application process, did you pay someone to help you do this? I know, and I if, saw that. <laughs> if you checked yes, right. um, you can just assume that's going to get put into another pile and looked at because, unfortunately, there's always bad actors. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see individuals out there preying on small businesses oh, yeah. that are concerned. Now, that's not to say there's never an excuse why you shouldn't pay someone. If you have an attorney or right. an accountant that you have a great relationship with mm -hmm. and you, you as a small business owner have kids or something and it's not in the cards for you to do it, and you want them to do it, I'm sure that's fine. But they want to avoid those predatory um, bad actors out there that are going to convince small business owners, you need to pay me in order to get 
this long. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's always going to be a predator yeah. element out there. You know, people who are going to take advantage of the fear and the anxiety that now businesses are experiencing. Hey, uh, Steve Vitani, uh, is it realistic to think we can get through on the phone with SPA right now? I'll tell you what, Steve, it's not realistic um, for you to call the 1-800 number, but I have in front of me the SBA South Florida District Office is hosting webinars twice a day, every day, and they're doing it almost like online office hours. Mm -hmm. So you can absolutely you know, jump onto those calls. In English and Spanish. In English and in Spanish. Right. Um, and again, it's twice a day, every day. They're doing it usually at um, either 9 or 11 a.m. and then usually in that 1 to 3 p.m. hour. If you go to sba.gov and you sign up for their newsletter, it'll ask you to put in your zip code and then you'll automatically get added to mm -hmm. our region's newsletter okay. that goes out. But I will say, Steve, if you have a question, you can call um, the WeVenture office at 321-674-7007. And we can tell you that information. You can go to our website and sign up for our newsletter. And we're pushing those out as well. We're forwarding that on so individuals see it. Um, I don't know that they're just post it online anywhere. You kind of have to get the daily newsletter. And repeat that number. Once again, I'm going to put it in the comments here on sure. Facebook. We venture is 674-7007. Uh -huh. All right. So that's in the comments now if, if you're tuning in here on Facebook Live. So once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We are addressing questions and concerns. We've already dispelled a couple big myths. We've learned about what we venture offers for the community. And now we're going to kind of get into some of the tips and tricks uh, of, of how to best qualify or how to best prepare to apply and those kind of things. I know uh, Catherine came here with, with all kinds of uh, resources for us. And speaking of resources, uh, if, you, if you look at the screen now, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and uh, bring up their website. Thank you. And in that website, you're going to go up to the navigation bar at the very top. And there's a resources button there. You're going to click that. And all, all kinds of like step-by-step -step information is there. John Adams is asking, we filled out the SBA $10,000 uh, uh, aid. Uh, they don't ask if we need more. Is that something that happens after approval? Yes. So, again, the SBA um, streamlined the process, and it's now going to be a two-part application <coughs> process. So that initial... Um, application that you submitted online that is very brief and does not ask for a lot of detailed information is just kind of phase one and that's going right. to help them determine what you are eligible for mm -hmm. and then you will be contacted by the SBA to um, further you know go down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. of pursuing the dollars and there is an opportunity you could get approved for um, and let me look at my notes so that mm -hmm. I don't lie to you sure. um, the EIDL is up to two million dollars um, uh, uh, from the SBA, but that does not mean you have to take the full amount that you get approved for. You'll have that initial disbursement, whether it's that $10,000 kind of grant that comes out that almost everybody hopefully will be, you know, who applies will be having access to. Um, but let's say you, you went for $1 million, you know, they give you your first drawdown. There's still going to be a time after you go through that where you can say, do you still think you need the full amount right. or not? So, no, it's not. They're not handing anybody just a big $2 million check up front. There's going to um, right. There's going to be some hurt. And, and things you have to think about, you still need to have a good relationship with your banker because once you get to the part to close that EDIL loan, um, you'll need to get things notarized. Um, and they tell you to plan for three to four weeks mm -hmm. at least for that EIDL loan, which is why small businesses may want to go through a local lender um, for a bridge loan or through the state for that Florida bridge loan, because those are going to close a lot quicker. Those should be able to close within a matter of days, mm -hmm. whereas the SBA EIDL loan could take a couple of weeks. So it sounds like for, let's just say I'm an employer, I have 30 employees. Do I want to take the, this sum, which is maybe like a grant, or do I want to take the loan, which I have to pay back? Maybe it's deferred a little bit. How, how does how does a business know which product to take and can they take multiple products maybe like the quick assistance grant plus the loan plus the payroll exemption tax or, or whatever you know whatever product that that may apply to them how, how do people know and, uh, and what's the best way to 
to apply for those? Is there an, a particular order where they should apply? Well, it's hard because some right. businesses, ev every business is different. Right. And that's why mm -hmm. we like to say, let's do a one-on-one -on -one consultation. You know, for free. For free from WeVenture free. rather than a um, blanket statement. Right. But if I can go over just a couple of the differences yes. to help you decide. Let's so um, the EIDL, again, it's going to take longer to close. That You're going to plan for three to four weeks. Okay. It's a fixed interest rate of 3.75 over 30 years. That's so very affordable. Very affordable. Yeah. And that's, a, that's, that's made to be a long term. You can use that EIDL loan to pay off um, one of the bridge loans that you either mm -hmm. get from FloridaDisasterLoans.gov or okay. from your local lender, that PPP loan that we have going out. Now, the Treasury did allocate more money to go out to the PPP program and through local lenders because working through the federal government when we have a 50-state crisis right. <laughs> is um, – it's going to take a while. Again, we talk about that efficiency. So there's $10 billion available through the SBA, mm. but that line is going to be very long and difficult. So if you work through your local lender, it's going to be a little bit faster turnaround. Um, and I believe the loan amount for there is up to $10 million. Let me check my notes. Yep. Um, but it's a maximum. The lesser between either two and a half times your payroll or $10 million are the maximum that you can qualify for. Okay. But that is an interest rate at 4%, and the duration is only 10 years. Now, both of those loan products will have a deferment. So it's not like you get out this loan, and starting in May, you have to start making payments on it. There's a nice deferral of either 6 to 12 months for both loan offerings. Um, now, the the... The EIDL does offer that bridge loan program of $10,000 to cover immediate costs. Mm -hmm. And it is forgivable if you meet the criteria that the SBA has lent out. So that does have that $10,000 grant component. The Paycheck Protection Program also has that $10,000 grant component, mm -hmm. but it must be used. You must show that that money was used to, to pay your staff. Gotcha. So for okay. some businesses, if you've already laid off your staff, um, you might not want to apply for that yet until you get to the point where you can rehire some individuals and use that because they're going to look very closely at how you use that money. And it's only forgiven if you can show and document that you did lo use the loan money mm -hmm. on payroll because the goal is there to keep people employed is what they want that $10,000 forgiven. Right. Whereas the EIDL, um, that is, you could use that for your rent mm -hmm. um, and for other overhead costs you might have. And again, to your question of stacking, you can absolutely stack. If you use the loans and you use the money for different purposes, right. as long as you can document and show what you used it for, they can be, um, uh, you can apply for them and they can be granted as long as they're covering different expenses. Um, well, that that's, that's perfect because I know some people, uh, you know, if they've already been closed, you know, some people mm -hmm. were very proactive and they closed their doors as soon as they heard that there may be a danger to their staff or uh, their clients. And so they're already kind of like in their fourth, maybe in fifth week of being closed. So once this money comes, it's going to be hardly a relief because they're, they've already missed revenue of, you know, 30 days. If they, if they apply today, get in four weeks, then now it's, you know, now they're trying to cover, you know, last two months, 60 days of revenue loss. Um, so it's really like, not even like a wash. I mean, it's, it's really like a, a Band-Aid. It so is. it seems like most people, even if, if they can get the $10,000 grant, most people are going to need to apply for this loan, which again is taking its time getting to people. And you have to work close with you, close with your bank yeah. because I'm not sure if it's coming in like increments or if it's just one big lump sum. That will come in increments as well, okay. I believe. Yeah. Now, you might get one larger check up front, but right. that, that's one of the things that the banks had a lot of issue with is because it was sort of billed by the administration a little bit right. that you should be able to go in and the check the banks will write you a check there that day. Well, all of our smaller local lenders and more regional or community banks or credit unions are like, whoa, 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 we don't have the <laughs> capital to just start writing yeah, everyone yeah. checks like that. So, um, yeah, so there, there will still be a... a an, Incremental and the difference between that, and I hate to say that, but the PPP program, mm. substantial amount of money, three hundred and forty-nine billion dollars that was allocated to get to small businesses via local lenders. Mm. Only ten billion was set aside for that SBA EIDL loan. I see. But the SBA, those loans are coming directly from the Treasury. The Treasury can just print money. So if Congress right. goes back and and like they're already talking and saying that they might do to expand something, I'm guessing the EIDL loans will be expanded because that 
that $10 billion mm-hmm. um, amount that three or four weeks ago seemed crazy right. has already been overshadowed by what they did with the CARES Act. So if they have to go right. back and revisit it, I'm guessing that we will see some more funds added to that EIDL loan program. And is there an expiration? Like how, how long will, you, will a business be able to apply for the SBA loans? Sure, that's a great question. So it is my understanding that we have up to six months from the when the start of this crisis, and, I, and the, that's a date sometime in March, right? Right. So And then you can be rejected up to three times with the wow. SBA, okay. fix your application and go back and apply again. Or if maybe the first time you weren't quite able to show hardship, well, by mm-hmm. the time May or June comes around, you're showing hardship, you can apply again. So that's really good to know. So over six months, and you can apply up to three times to either correct your application or, you know, uh, if you haven't yet applied, apply for the first will time. Will they tell you why you got denied? They will. They will okay. tell you why you've got denied. And I'm not looking forward to that because, again, right. they, they've <laughs> they've told the, S, the, the, the women's business centers that they're really going to be referring people to us to help them you know, either fix applications right. or find other resources. And um, those aren't going to be fun days when people start to. And, and you're by appointment only, so we're not encouraging people to line up at your door. Yes. Right. Yeah, okay. we're, we're doing Zoom and, and phone calls and virtual and everything cool. now. Yeah. We do have our, our phones are staffed. Um, normal business hours and mm-hmm. you know we have our email but we're not doing in person it's all um, remote and is that a hotline or is that the same number that we put up the on the same, comments that's our same number yeah okay. and we had just have it forwarded so that it's always okay. um, staffed and if you have to leave a voicemail then we'll get back to mm-hmm. you um, uh, since you do work with a lot of entrepreneurs most mm-hmm. most times when, when you're an entrepreneur you're a solopreneur mm-hmm. meaning you're you're trying to find the capital to do some hiring and, and actually, you know, create a position sometimes like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm spending all this time doing administrative stuff where I could easily pass that on to a virtual assistant or even like a physical assistant or even like a part time employee. Mm-hmm. W- what about those people who may just be in a cottage industry working out of the garage or from home and uh, and now that they find that they're unable to do work? Sure. Um, is there, is there something specific just for that solo person, or they do you are. have to have employees? No, they are. The, um, the only the only disaster assistance right now that you would not be eligible for is the Florida disaster loan. Okay. That um, the, That's the state bridge loan program that was mm. released a number of weeks ago, and that's the state of Florida money. Um, that really was limited to businesses, whereas what the federal government has done, both through the EIDL loans and the Payment Protection Program, mm-hmm. those are available to not only nonprofits, but um, sole proprietors, independent contractors, um, and the self-employed. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. it, they're much more broad coverage base. And yeah. now there was a delay because I believe with the Payment Protection Program, they wanted to phase in small businesses on April 3rd, Mm -hmm. and then beginning this Friday, those 1099, um, you know, kind of independent contractors, they'll be able to apply beginning Friday the 10th. And I saw that because a lot of, uh, a lot of, even my friends uh, and associates, uh, they're independent contractors. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they were, they were being, you know, they were just quickly denied Mm -hmm. because I guess they were applying too too early. Right. So there's, it's, it looks like there's different windows opening up depending on what criteria you have. I can't, I can't overstate the unprecedented nature of Mm. the crisis that we're facing because even, so let's just start there. Normally these types of disaster loan programs, Mm. Florida businesses might be used to that because after a hurricane, they get triggered and states offer bridge loans and the SBA comes in and says, we're going to offer some disaster loans. But is, it is very rare that the entire state is impacted. Right. And we saw after Irma, how difficult it was when that whole state, we're literally talking now, this is a national disaster where all 50 states will be impacted. Mm -hmm. And so when we have these calls with the SBA, they are just asking to please practice patience because this is unprecedented at, at every level and, and the response that they're trying to get out this this payment protection plan using the power of those existing relationships with local lenders to mm-hmm. try to serve as many individuals as they can but um never even when a tornado or hurricane never is every single business in an entire community impacted and i can promise you from what we're hearing every single business in our community and in, and in the entire country are being impacted by this shutdown 
Yeah, and, and social distancing, not shutting, yes. the social distancing. Social distancing. So what we're yeah, what we're finding is because it's such a big amount, I mean two mm -hmm. trillion, I mean they're really anticipating pretty much every industry going into some kind of slumpage mm -hmm. from farming and agriculture to of course, you know, we've already seen uh, you know, the, the, the first hit pretty much was anything tourist related. Yeah. You know, theme parks, cruise ships, I mean they, I mean sporting events, anything that was non essential, luxury, tourism yeah. related, hospitality related went like in you know now we're seeing all the employment applications and now the governor of florida just uh mentioned that you know they're boosting ramping up the the servers to yeah. uh take care of all of the overwhelming uh yeah. people you know who are who are falling for unemployment right now um i think upwards of like 10 million we've already seen it's gonna be yeah and it's probably gonna Un it's unimaginable i mean yeah. when you think back to where we were in january at like three percent to yeah something. like yeah. unemployment yeah and yeah. and to think that overnight and the graphs you know i mean i think the front page of the new york times had it that mm -hmm. that first friday or sunday when they announced the jobless jump i mean it's it's it, it's still i feel like i'm in a bad dream and yeah. i just i keep waiting to wake up and say that was just a bad dream i know i know and, and, and we all are we're all feeling that anxiety you know what's going to happen which brings me to i mean we're, we're we've already Kind of been in uh, this conversation for uh, a little over a half an hour. We got about 25 minutes remaining. So let's get to some positive things. I mean, now that we've covered uh, what WeVenture does and who these loans and, and this assistance is going to be helping and serving, uh, we already got through some of the myths, some some tips and tricks on, on, on uh, how to stack or, or, or take advantage of some of these things. Let's talk specifically to that business owner. Mm. What what does this mean? Because we, we, we spoke uh, earlier about all the opportunities Absolutely. that also come out of something like this. Uh, we've seen uh, opportunities um, pretty much after uh, some other different crises. You know, mm. something comes up and it, and, it, and it maybe just piques an interest uh, or, or uh, just like a common um, uh, singular thought, you know, mm. a, a community thought that's, uh, that, that maybe – again, could help a, a business. So, I, you know, we've already been seeing the word uh, telemedicine used. Mm -hmm. You know, we're seeing a lot more people telecommuting mm -hmm. uh, more than ever before. We see people doing virtual conferencing and video conferencing and, and things of that nature. What could you tell a, a business today to maybe, you know, think outside the box? Is, is, are there any opportunities that they could take advantage of while, the, you know, we're experiencing this downtime? Absolutely. So the... The first opportunity that you have is to assess honestly with yourself, mm -hmm. is your business model sustainable in, okay. its, in its current state? Is right. it sustainable? Because the truth that we already know from these brief three weeks is that life will not be the same afterwards. Um, we are discovering that things that can be done remotely probably will see an increase in, in doing so remotely. Right. We will see a shift in social uh culture and mm -hmm. and that that'll translate to shopping and buying power and everything for a while mm -hmm. so if you are a business right now that this is saying i don't think i could carry on if this were to continue then this is the time for you to do that self-assessment contact we venture we have a mm -hmm. thing called business model canvas oh, cool. and let's talk about where your revenue is coming from where your opportunities where your key partnerships mm -hmm. that you can get your your structure in order now so when we start to revamp and the world is different right. that you're in the best possible position to do so and um you know a business that really comes to mind um anything that has to do with pet care and anything like that you know mm -hmm. i think individuals are really um and the same thing with child care when you're at home all day long and seeing that you know there's going to be a huge resurgence in things that that don't change mm -hmm. and if you're ready to uh to be there for people and help them reestablish new routines. Mm. Um, but are people going to be calling dog walkers or the grooming the same way? I don't know. Like right. everything's going to be different. So how can you start to pivot your business now to be ready on the other end mm. to meet the demands that are coming? Every recession has great startups that come out of it. Right. And a lot of the industry that we all now take as common, not commonplace, but that are certainly saturated, your um, your gig economy of the Ubers and the Lyft. Exactly. Th they like to say that all came out of the 2008 recession right. right so what awesome ideas does somebody have that we're going to see come out of this recession yeah to me the biggest thing is going to be businesses accepting that this is a, a change right. so you you cannot sit on your laurels and think <laughs> that you'll you'll just jump back to business as usual you're going to have to adapt in some way so mm -hmm. let's um 
focus on doing that. Well, especially if, you, if we pay attention to consumer behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're used to now getting delivery for, you know, their food mm -hmm. or, you know, going, you know, getting their curbside takeout, which is very popular, uh, yeah. you, know, you know, pretty much the only way restaurants could be of service now. What if people just like just driving through, grabbing a meal for four? You know, what, yeah. what, what if uh, they, they like somebody doing their grocery shopping? Um, you know, so, yeah, there is some disruption going to be mm -hmm. happening. And, and again, if you could be on the tail end of that or just know the trend and be able to kind of, you know, hang on to those uh, coattails, those yeah. proverbial coattails, uh, then you may be able to come out of this you know, accelerating. And, and I know I've been talking to a lot of um, small business people. I'm a big small business advocate, hence, mm -hmm. you know, why, why I do a program like this. And, uh, and you know, we're all kind of saying, well, now what do we do? Well, mm -hmm. if you're a restaurant, you're, you better be doing some deep cleaning. You know, you better Absolutely. be scrubbing the heck out of that. If, if you're a uh, virtual uh, business, you better be increasing your database, uh, keeping in touch with your uh, existing partners and 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 clients and make, you know yeah look out for them I'll, you know offer some value in wh whichever ways maybe grow that virtual platform mm -hmm. that you've been waiting to do you know maybe it's a, a YouTube channel or uh, or even podcast or you know whatever it may have you start to think outside the box uh, as far as how people are going to be consuming things in the future you know mm -hmm. more delivery more curbside pickup I mean who knows what it's going to look like if people are you know if, if, if it becomes into the ninety day. You know, behaviors, habits are made within, you know, 30, 60 days, you know, from, you know, most psychology uh, viewpoints. I'm never putting on tight pants again. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I think that's the, the best meme that's like, uh, you know, we're all going to be so used to wearing our sweats and yoga pants that... I refuse. Maybe, maybe, there, <laughs> m maybe we can make a like a formal robe. You know, you yeah. get out of bed, put on the formal oh, robe. Wow. Looks like a business attire, and uh, and you do your video conferencing, right? Where's the snuggie? <laughs> the snuggie of the COVID. We need like the the robe. I, the, exactly. Yeah. You know, so there, there's I think there's all kinds of different things. So use your imagination. Mm -hmm. See what has been working. Where people's behaviors and habits have been forming. Uh, what direction they're forming. What's popular. You know, or again, are people cho still choosing to get in the car and drive somewhere? Or are they maybe, you know, selecting an Uber Eats or, or that kind of thing? Uh, Amazon, you know, uh, shopping and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, buying, you know, more USA. You know, maybe that's a, a good behavior that we could could have and, and so forth. We see that a lot locally in terms of supply chain and people mm -hmm. really rethinking through the diversity of your supply chain. And that's advice that we always offer small businesses is you should never be reliant right. on one other you know, source, you know, if, if your business is dependent on that, right. that's a huge risk. And I think that a lot of businesses are experiencing that right now. And it's a good reminder of going back to the business fundamentals and the mm. business basics now. Like, do you truly have a business model that that can sustain you? And do you have a client right. base or a customer base um, that you can continue to serve right. even with curveballs coming at you? Or are you kind of one trick pony and, and not diversified enough right. um, to see you through these ups and downs? Yeah. Now, again, um, really good mentions because e even with the pharmaceuticals, you know, people are learning that, wow, China manufactures a lot, a lot. of our pharmaceuticals. If it's not the complete form, it's a ingredient mm -hmm. thereof that, that makes it. And uh, wow, you know, is, you know, that's kind of biting ourselves. We're going to be feeling the, the, the ripple effects of this right. um, for a while just because the global supply chain has been so disrupted right. and so things that we weren't even aware yet um that are going to be in short supply just because china was on a shutdown for three right. months you know we'll be feeling that now that things are moving back so i mean think of uh, india you know one one and a half billion people you know where we get a lot of textiles a lot of mm -hmm. you know clothes and, and those kind of things uh those people are in, in lockdown mm -hmm. like you know like really bad so we're yeah we're gonna s start to see like you said the supply chains kind of diminish and we're going to have to pivot and maybe find that local manufacturer, you know, and, and give them an opportunity to help out, even if it is a little bit more of a cost. But maybe it's, you know, not only are you helping somebody that's local, you know, but you're also uh, you're also helping somebody to where you're not dependent on, you know, the freight because, mm -hmm. you know, with, with something like this, you know, cargo uh, shipping and, you know, all those kind of things are affected. So, 
yeah, my, my, you know, might as well give somebody else a chance um, and, and, our and chambers, build relationships. Our chambers are really trying to keep up to date with what business services are available and right. who's there and how they can help each other. Um, and the EDC is doing a wonderful job of yes. staying in touch with manufacturers and making sure that as there's things that are being needed in our community, whether it's healthcare supplies or you know some of these transportation mm -hmm. um, challenges that we're facing, that we have to work together locally first to say, okay, w how can we help each other and right. how can we make sure that our local needs are being met? And I'm really proud of the business community because it has been open, it's been very cooperative, right. um, and I think every business is um, I'd love to give my business to a local, you know, manufacturer or this or right. that right now. So if we can help each other, let's take advantage of that and, and do that for each other. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that could be a really good byproduct mm -hmm. and something that uh, is highly beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't need a whole lot of reworking or reprogramming, you know. And and uh, again, I think it's it's just a, a, a habit forming kind of thing that we mm -hmm. could uh, embrace. So. Let's get back to the uh, the people who are again, maybe they can't effectively pivot. Is there a way for somebody to reinvent a business? Is there a way for somebody to um, know when to just know that they're Hold not sustainable? I mean, you know, I mean, has some. What, what's a graceful way for somebody to just, you know, that's well. So we had start over. We uh, let me let me approach that from a different angle. Yeah, we <laughs> we we had. Um, a crisis coming, whether a lot of people wanted to admit it or not, but with the aging baby boomer generation, right. there were a tremendous number of small businesses that were not adequately prepared for succession planning within their own ranks and that maybe their owners for a long time, because mm -hmm. we'd had such a stellar economy and such growth, when I'm ready to retire. I'll just sell, mm -hmm. right? So those numbers were already out there, and it was astronomical in terms of from the United States with our baby boom generation. I think a lot of those businesses that hadn't done that internal succession planning mm -hmm. and that were kind of counting on, oh, in the next three to ten years, I'm just going to sell, right. um, we might see those type of business owners just you know, close up. There certainly will be individuals with cash ready and, mm -hmm. and that see the opportunity and the entrepreneurs that are ready to take over a business and, and maybe some of them will come out. Mm -hmm. But that's my big fear is that we're just going to see a big wave um, of folks like that. But those are also the same people that just saw their retirement accounts get absolutely depleted, you know, right. as our stock market fell. So maybe they can't afford to just fold up and walk away anymore. But then you'll see a whole nother set of individuals that maybe they just didn't have their ducks in order. Mm -hmm. And if you if you weren't keeping good records and if you can't get access to some of these lending and these, you know, the, the cash is only there for, for so long. And the government's doing what they can. You mm -hmm. know, the state of Florida, you're not allowed to evict anyone or foreclose on anyone right now. Right. Um, mm -hmm. The government's trying to say, like, let's just be patient and let people take a pause mm -hmm. everywhere and, and then try to restart up. But there will be some businesses that just financially won't be able to do that. And, and those are the calls that break my heart the most when people are kind of having that realization. Or maybe they're just mm -hmm. so new, you know, right. because a lot of these programs and a lot of the resources are geared towards businesses that have been um, around for at least a year. That's not to say that some in the 1099 type contract employees in some newer businesses mm -hmm. might not qualify for anything. But most of them are geared towards a business that at least has one year's worth of tax returns. And if you don't have that, you're that very new business, um, that's gonna be tough too. And you don't have a customer base, like everything's new, you know, when you're right. in that startup mentality, you're new. But my husband, he's in a startup, and they're very lucky they, they were able to receive funding, they have a good well, private funding, private funding. Right. Yeah. Um, but this is in the fall, you know, so they're right. a startup. They were founded last June, I think. Cool. Um, but they were able to get a lot of funding in the fall. And it's unbelievable because now they're in this downturn and the sky is kind of falling. But because they had their ducks in a row, they were growing the white way. They didn't take out more. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't give away more equity than what they really wanted to. And, and so they're able to go. They're going to be able to sustain through this. Now, granted, they were a uh, sports startup. Mm -hmm. So not a great time when the entire sports <laughs> world right is on halt and there's no football season for the foreseeable future but they've pivoted and so now they're going to do an online virtual combine the first of its kind helping high school athletes um, do what they do and show off their skills so they can still be found by uh, coaches around the country so that's an opportunity that they saw they were able to pivot right. they saw that okay we can be open we can afford to pay our people mm. um, how can we rise to the moment um, and that's what I love entrepreneurs for is because they see the opportunity when other people kind of, 
contract, right. they see they find the opportunity, um, no matter what the world throws at them. Yeah. What? Um, and and now that we're get, gonna kind of close up. Um, I think most of the things have, have we gone through some of your bullet points are the, the most uh, important you hit a lot of what I wanted to just in terms okay. of letting the, the business I want, know I want to give you an opportunity here. to make sure that we get all the information out that you were prepared to uh, yeah the, so I if I can just run through what we have upcoming because yes, again we're still focusing on helping you um, launch grow or sustain your business and so in terms of launching your business um, we do have that uh, gems program for new startups that will be starting up here oh, yeah. we have an information session on april 13th where you can learn more about that 12-week program it gives you all the steps necessary to create a business plan and become a business owner that has launched by august so that's still happening informational session april 13th okay our ignite 360 mentoring program this is where um, if you are an existing business and this uh Social distancing uh, gives you time to work on your business mm -hmm. rather than just in your business. Um, please contact us, Kathy Register, in my office. She will put together a team of consultants to help you meet your strategic objective. What do you want to come out of the end of this either three-month or six-month time period? Right and say that you've accomplished. Now you could go to New York or San Francisco and hire consultants for tens of thousands of dollars, or you can come to WeVenture and get targeted um, uh, consulting by individuals team created just for you um, that will walk with you over that three or six month period. Mm -hmm. So that's our Ignite 360 mentoring program. Um, highly recommend it for um, sustainable growth or to prepare yourself for the change that's coming. And then in terms of sustaining your business, um, again, we offer free consultations and business coaching. So if you just have questions, you can call and, and our professionals are happy to help you. But we also have our um, Brevard Business Community Webinar. We helped organize with all the local business services. We have a webinar on Monday the 13th at 1 p.m. talking about the tax and policy implications from some of this recent legislation. So we'll have a CPA and then a um, like labor attorney on to talk about some of those policy implications for small businesses Perfect. at the 13th at 1 p.m. And then Wednesday, April 15th at 8.30, we venture, we still like to do our networking. We're all about you know usually bringing women together and we talk about topics. Yes. So we're gonna do, um, I hope it'll be a cathartic um, experiment <laughs> in a webinar focused on how we're all gonna survive this business crisis right. um, and we um, can't all be together over a cup of coffee but we can still come together and kind of have a, a, a shared discussion about how we're all managing and how we're all hanging in there yeah, that's probably the most painful thing right now is just not being able to network mm -hmm. I mean if you're I, an extrovert I, this is like which I, I am this yes. is torture it is I'm, absolute I'm, torture. I mean you know I run into you at, at a, a few different gatherings and uh, and you know I, I miss my people yeah. you know we have a tribe of, uh, of, of, of business um, uh, professionals. professionals, yeah, and you know whether they're business owners or consultants or uh, whatever may have you, or, or they support businesses, you know, mm -hmm. like lenders and and uh, attorneys and so forth. And it's really hard to not be invited, you know, yeah. to things anymore. It's you know, it, it's almost like we're getting a little stir crazy. How about this? How, how about we uh, go out with the show uh, with uh, some maybe top three things that a business person can do at their home to kind of just you know offset some of the, the anxiety and and other things that they're feeling um well i i believe the customer is always right and customer first so i believe if you have those key customers or key clients mm -hmm. um this is the time to work on that relationship and talk about um you know don't just have the conversation of oh gee we can or can't help you right. you know schedule time to talk about that relationship maintenance and really making sure that you're understanding how it's impacting them how mm -hmm. can you um, and, and that means whether you're retail or whether you know you have clients or something that you serve right. I think the same is true understand what they're going through what their needs are and and let them know you want to be a part mm -hmm. partner with them going forward and work on your customer relations and then if you have employees I think this is a fantastic time to be doing training um, all yeah. the things that we wish we had time to do. And um, I know it's hard when you're trying to be both a teacher. You know, you might have <laughs> employees that are trying to be teachers at home right. and work. So that idea of an eight or nine hour work day is, is very much a dream right, right now that seems unattainable. But set out some training objectives for mm -hmm. your staff and say, in this time off, I'd like you to accomplish a b or c exactly. um, and help them grow so that when you come back out the other end, there's so many great books um for whether it's customer service relationship or whatever you know that mm -hmm. great send them a digital book and say 
you know, here, I spent $5 and you can, um, you know, get up to speed on whatever it is you need or your Excel classes you've always wanted to take. Mm. Um, and then I think the last thing businesses need to do is be really mindful of their community because everyone is in this boat together. And I'm so impressed with Brevard at, at the way we've rallied yes. together. And I think that we will get through this. We're a very diverse economy. We are not like some of the other parts of Florida that are entirely either tourism right. or service or service or ag <laughs> right. yeah we do we have a fairly diverse economy we have a lot of people still working because we have some major government contractors and oh, employers yeah. like that there's a lot of people in our community still working so thank god for our restaurants you know they have people that can afford you know to be still doing takeout and that kind of stuff so let's support each other um and be there for each other and mm. and lord willing we will all come out on the other end stronger Amen. Amen. Uh, real quick, if somebody's out there and are feeling benevolent, how do they support your nonprofit? We would love your support for our nonprofit. Right. <laughs> Again, we do have to match that SBA grant every year. So right. um, if you go to weventure.fit.edu, we have a give page. Good. Um, and then our typical donation, we have what's called a $1,000 League of Extraordinary Investors. Mm. That's what we find a lot of people who are successful businesses and they want to give back. They believe in supporting not only female entrepreneurship, but in the culture of entrepreneurship here in Brevard. Um, mm. That's a great way to do so. But $5, $25, $100, or 1000 right. we'll take it at any it helps us meet that match. We had to cancel our largest fundraiser of the year, um, which is supposed to be March 24th, our Women Who Rock. Yes, so we I, do a yeah, luncheon and we yeah. celebrate just women who are doing awesome things in the community. And I shouldn't say canceled because we will do it. We have postponed. We have postponed. We yeah. have uh, hotel dates reserved for June or October. So Good. we will still celebrate. It's yeah. just a matter of when. You know, even the Masters was uh, postponed to Everything. October. So maybe that's going to be just a, a good month. Ho ho hopefully, if we do plan for the summer and those summer months, hopefully everything that we have, including, you know, our general election and everything else that's happening, hopefully those things can be, we can get to a point where to push back those items yeah. in, any further, you know, yeah. and, uh, I hope so. uh, well, listen, I think most people have going through some, you know, spring training and, uh, even, uh, you know, some of the early, uh, baseball, the March madness. I mean, you know, people are going through some serious withdrawals, you know, they don't know what to do with themselves. So yeah, but the, we venture, uh, again, you can find them at weventure.fit.edu. That's and, us. And, uh, yeah, so there's, again, a resources tab. There's a give tab. Just navigate the site. See what you like. And, uh, and once again, thank you to uh, Catherine Rudloff. I really appreciate everything uh, you were able to share with us today. No, thank you for having me. That's yeah. so important that we reach as many businesses as we can to let them know we're here. So exactly. I really appreciate it. And any it. final words? Um, thank you, and everyone stay, stay positive. We can, and we will get through this together. All right, there you have it. This has been another episode of Business Elite Brevard Edition with your host, Jesse Hall. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for all the questions. And again, if you're listening to this uh, podcast after the fact, just know that we do go live on Facebook and just look up facebook.com forward slash Face Coast Podcast. Give us a like, give us a follow, and you won't miss another live stream right here from Space Coast Podcast Studios. Thanks so much. And uh, again, may all your business be well and successful. Take care, guys. Thank you.